Hi, welcome to another episode of Susie Reads. Today, we are going to read Dr. Seuss's Sneetches. This is one of my favorite, favorite stories because have you ever felt like you were different than everybody else? Or maybe have you ever felt, met somebody else who was different and not known how to treat them? This is a good story to help us know how to treat people who are different than us. Let's take a look. Now, the star belly sneeches had bellies with stars and the plain belly sneeches had none upon bars. Those stars weren't so big, they were really quite small. You might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star belly sneeches would brag, we're the best kind of sneech on the peaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. We'll have nothing to do with the plain belly sort. And whenever they met someone they were out walking, they'd hike right on past them without even talking. When the star belly children and out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all all. You only could play if your bellies had stars and the plain belly children had none upon bars. When the star belly sneeches had frankfurter roasts or picnics or parties or marshmallow toasts, they never invited the plain belly sneeches. They left them out cold on the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near, and that's how they treated them year after year. Then one day it seems while the plain belly sneeches were moping and doping alone on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clearing keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean, and I've heard of your troubles. I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that. I'm the fix it up chappy. I've come here to help you. I have what you need and my prices are low and I work at top at great speed. And I and my work is 100% guaranteed. Then quickly Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar ma machine. And he said, "You want stars like the star belly sneech? My friends, you can have them for $3 each." Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they clamored inside. Then the big machine roared and it clonked and it bonked and it jerked and it burnt and it bopped them about. <laughs> but the thing really worked. When the plain belly sneeches popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon bars. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the snart start. We're exactly like you, you can't tell us apart. We're all just the same now, you snooty old smarties. And now we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at the first. We're still the best Nietzsche's and they are the worst. But now, how in the world will we know, they all frowned, if which, is, if which kind is what or the other way around? Then up came McBean with a very sly wink. And he said, things are not quite as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who, that's perfectly true. But come with me, friends, do you know what I'll do? I'll make you again the best niches on beaches and, it, and all it will cost you is $10 eaches. Bellies with stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star off machine. This wondering contraption will take off your stars so you won't look like stitches who have them on bars. And that hand, handy machine, working very precisely, removed all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. With their snoots in the air, they paraded about and they opened their beaks and they let out a shout, we know who is who. And that now there isn't a doubt the best kind of sneeches are sneeches without. Then of course, with all, <clears throat> then of course those with stars all got frightfully mad to be wearing a star now was 
frightfully bad. Then, of course, old Sir Bester McMonkey McBean invited them into his star off machine. Then, of course, from then on, as you probably guessed, things got into a really, things really got into a horrible mess. All the rest of the day on those wild screaming beaches, the fix it up chappy kept fixing up sneeches. On again, or off again, on again, in again, out again, through the machines they raced round and about again, changing their stars every minute or two. They kept paying money, they kept running through, until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one was that one, or what one was who, or which one was what one, or what one was who. Then, when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chappy packed up and he went. He laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They never will learn. No, you can't teach a snitch. But McBean was quite wrong, I am quite happy to say, that sneeches got really quite smart on that day. The day they decided that sneeches are sneeches, and no kind of sneech is the best on the beaches. That day, all the Sneeches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon bars. And that is the story of the Sneeches. And I hope that when you meet somebody who doesn't look like you, you can just be friends and invite them to your Frankfurter Roast and play ball. Till next time, see you again.